Salut, Nabi. Gam ka chand ye paigam laya A gaya hai ye mahe muharram Gam ka chand ye paigam laya A gaya hai ye mahe muharram Kabr chhoor ke nikli hai zahra उनका फूला फला बाग उजड़ा कब्र छोड़ के निकली है जहरा उनका फूला फला बाग उजड़ा दे दो उनको बहतर कपुर सा आ गया है माहे मुखरम गम का चांद ये पैगाम लाया आ गया है ये माहे मुखरम क्यों लहद में है रोटी सकीना <coughs> क्यों लहद में है रोटी सकीना जाके बहला वो शाह मदीना अयतीमी का उनका ये महीना आ गया है ये माहे मुहर्रम आज कब्र में रोटी है लैला गम जवा का हुआ दिल में दाजा आज कब्र में रोटी है लैला गम जवा का हुआ दिल में ताजा बांदा बेटे के सर पे न सहरा आ गया है ये माहे मुहर्रम गम का चांद ये पैगाम लाया आ गया है ये माहे मुहर्रम रो रो कहती है बानो ये दुखिया खो गया बन में बेशीर बेटा रो रो के कहती है बानो ये दुखिया खो गया बन में बेशीर बेटा कब्र में झुलाऊंगी झूला आ गया है ये माए मुहर्रम कब्र में रोटी है बिनते जहरा लुट गई कर बला में मैं दुखिया बनी कह दी फिरी सर बढ़ना आ गया है ये माहे मुहर्रम गम का चांद ये पैगाम लाया आ गया है ये माहे मुहर्रम सवाल हमें पिदर पे बुलाना ओसेन दिल ना तोड़ना हमें पिदर पे बुलाना ओसेन दिल ना तोड़ना ए बदत 
सके हैं मौला ए गुनार है ए हम मंगर ऐसा चे तुम्हारे तो सोगवार ए हम खता ऐसा रे बुलाना ओ से दिल ना तोड़ना दुआ तुम से खुल जाए जो अपना ने नसीब किस रिटार से से पूछो जो हम ए तुम्हारी खरीब और दुआ ओ में मिलाना उसे ने दिल ना तोड़े ना पकते अर जो दिल में मैं कहे जो है फिर है पे एत जानी पे ए अपने डर डर पर ए खब पर सा करना उसे ने दिल ना तोड़े ना हमें पे डर पे बुलाना उसे ने दिल ना तोड़े ना हमें पे डर पे बुलाना उसे ने दिल ना तोड़े ना सलवार एजाज मुस्तफ़ा में शरीयत खड़ी रही एजाज मुस्तफ़ा में शरीयत खड़ी रही दरवाज़ाए बतूल पे रहमत खड़ी रही पुश्ते नबी पे आके सजदा में चढ़े हुसैन पुश्ते नबी पे सजदा में आकर चढ़े हुसैन बैठे रहे हुसैन इबादत खड़ी रही सल अला मोहम्मद व आल मोहम्मद जिक्र गमे से महफिल सजी रही जिक्र गमे फिल सजी रही गुल हो गया चराग मगर रो मगर रो शनि रही अकबर के बाद जिस्त में क्या दिल कशी अकबर के बाद जिस्त में क्या दिल कशी रही लैला तमाम यही सो रही लैला 
तमाम उम्र यही सोचती रही अब सपने बाजों को देखती रही जिक्रे गमे हुसैन से महफिल सजी रही सलू अला मोहम्मद व आल मोहम्मद ए चा कर भला के तूने तो देखे होंगे उतरे थे इस जमी पर अर्श बरी के तारे ए कर बला के ए चांद जल वगर है हाशिम का चांद यहाँ पर खैरात रोशनी की ले लीजियो यहाँ से ए कर बला के ए चांद इस जमी पर रखियो हमेशा ठंडक सोते जो है यहाँ पर जहरा के है ये प्यारे ए तसली मोसल सभी लो कौसर के है ये माले मारे गए जो प्यासे इस नहर के किनारे ए हुर और हबीब जैसे जाबाज और हिब्बा मारे गए यहीं पर अंसार शाहिदी के ए ए मारे गए यहीं पर बेदर्दियों सितम से जैनब के दोनों प्यारे मुस्लिम के दोनों बेटे ए कर बला के पामाल हो रही थी कासिम की लाश रन में 
अब्बास और सरवर चुनते थे उनके टुकड़े ए चांद बाजू कटे यहीं पर अब्बास से बाफा के इसने वगाना पाया पानी भी लाना पाए ए चांद इस सर जमी पर गुजरा सरवर पे ये ही सदमा सीने पे खाई बर्ची हम शक्ल मुस्तफा ने ए चांद पानी पिलाने लाए एक महल का को सरवर की गजब हुरमलाने तीरे से तम लगा के गर्दन छिदी पे सर की बाजू छिदा पदर का दोनों तरप तरप कर प्यासे जहाँ से गुजरे ए चांद कर भला के इस बन में एक बच्ची बाबा को ढूंढती थी बिखरे हुए परे थे जब सर बरी दलाशर फिर ये भी तूने देखा वो गम रसीदा बच्ची सीने पर सो रही थी बेसर पदर से लिपटे ए चांद कर बला के बाजू बंधे यहीं पर पहले पहल हरम के इस सर जमी से निकले सज्जाद सर झुकाए ए चांद शहजाद ये जनाही मालिक है कर बला का किसकी मजाल आए जब तक वो न बुलाए ए चांद कर बला के तूने तो देखे होंगे उतरे थे इस जमी पर अरशे बरी के तारे ए चांद कर भला के सलवा Brothers and sisters, salam alaikum. If I may remind you to please move forward so we can make room for the people who are coming slightly late. And just a couple of quick announcements. One is the Muharram Fund. The Muharram Fund is open. Uh, please donate generously to ensure that your name is written down on the book so that on the day of Mahshar, you know that you are called, inshallah, to support the Majalis of Imam Hussain. We have heard a lot since yesterday and the earlier uh, lecture as well by Sister Barak about the significance of, of this Majalis. And let's let you be the one who is enabling that Majlis by your contribution. Tomorrow, inshallah, uh, there's going to be a poetry program after uh, the Salah. So we encourage children, especially, to sign up for the, for the poetry. We have, uh, you know, a few people, but would be nice to have a little bit more. This is the time to shine, and the poetry can be done in English, Urdu, Swahili, Gujarati, you name it. Uh, French would work as well, although I may not understand, but it's okay, we can, we can have it there. And I know we have <coughs> heard yesterday from a couple of people, uh, I know parents come with children, and children do make noise, uh, but I have read somewhere that the sign of a healthy, most is when you see and uh, you know children running around or making a little bit of noise this is going to be our generation we can stop them 
from not making noise and it will discourage the parents. They will stop coming, you know, 15 years from today we will be complaining, how come there nobody comes to the masjid? So let's be patient with the children, let them explore whatever it is that we have to do and let them enjoy coming to the, to the masjid. With that, uh, what you call, join me in inviting Sheikh for, with three loud salawat. صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة غريب يا مظلوم كربلا سيدي ما خاب من تمسك بكم أمن من التجا إلى حصنكم يا ليتنا يا ليتنا ثم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما وجه الصباح علي ليل مظلم وربيع أيامي علي محرم والليل يشهد لي بأني ساهر طاب للناس الرقاد فهوموا The light of day is dark as night The joys of life from me depart the night bears witness that I have not slept instead all night I cried and wept قلقان تقلبني الهموم بمضجعي ويغور فكري في الزمان فيتهموه ما خلت أن الدهر من عاداته 
تروى الكلاب به ويضمى الضيغم I did not assume that the day will come that Hussein would leave the Prophet's home. What life has dealt the Prophet's son that I had Hussein and his family We're on the run, Aba Abdullah. With fear for his family, he left at night. And the daughters of Fatima were filled with fright. Sayyidah Sakina narrates that at the night that we were supposed to depart from Medina, my father called upon us all. He told us to get ready as soon as possible. She says that no one on the face of earth was filled with more fear and fright than the family of Prophet Muhammad. We did not know when will they raid our homes, when will they come knocking on our door. ويقدم الأموي وهو مؤخر ويؤخر العلوي وهو مقدم خرج الحسين من المدينة خائفا كخروج ما خائفا يتكتم وقد انجلى عن مكة وهو ابنها وبه تشرفت الحطي وزمزم قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم عطروا مجالسكم بذكر محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد زينوها بالثانية اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد نوروها بالثالث I wildly spread misconceptions and the conscience of some people is that if you are ignorant to something then you will not be held accountable. That's why there is a saying ignorant is bliss. You know they spread this out that you know if you're ignorant it's okay it doesn't matter. You won't be held Accountable on the contrary to this widespread belief, ignorance is not bliss. Firstly and foremostly, if we look at how people live their lives, if you ask any man or woman that has come of age, 
the ones that have had some experience, that would they like to go back in time and change some decisions they have made? I guarantee 99.9% .9 of all those who, have, who you ask will answer positively. Now you ask them, why would you like to go back in time? They say, because we did not know the things we know now. Experience has given us knowledge that we did not have when we uh, were young, at our young age. Now we would like to go do things differently, approach matters in a different manner. That just goes to show that knowledge is the true bliss. If they had knowledge beforehand, if they knew beforehand what are the correct steps to take, what are the correct measures, they would have done it. And they would have reached a far better place in a far better situation where they did have that knowledge than when they didn't. See, there is a beautiful narration that Dhul Qarnayn, whom is said to be a prophet, Dhul Qarnayn, salamullahi alayh, was conquering the world. He was uh, aided, supported by God. He was Mansur. And he was conquering the world, spreading the word of God, the unity of Allah Azza wa Jal, justice. He didn't conquer the world for his, his personal gains, but to spread justice and uh, to make live, uh, people live in harmony. And so he reached a position in the hadith that says a place, a location, the hadith says the dhulumat. Now, I don't know what this dhulumat means. Some people have tried to explain it, that he reached maybe the northern hemisphere when it was at night. So it was like sixth month uh, of, uh, sorry, the northern po uh, polar. So it was six months at night, so it was a long night. They called it dhulumat. Some people have different translations. I don't know what this is, but the hadith says that he entered the, the dhulumat. It was a very, very dark place. People could not see where they were walking. So he was with his horse riders. They entered the dhulumat. They reached a place where under their legs, there was a noise. It's like rocks hitting each other. So the Riders asked the Qarnayn, they told him, Oh Master, what is this thing that's making noise beneath our feet? The Qarnayn replied that this is something that whoever shall carry of it or from it will regret it. And whoever does not carry anything of it will also regret it. So some people thought to themselves, you know, why should I burden myself with something I will eventually regret? So I won't carry. And the other said, it's regret both ways. You know, let me just carry and see what, what will this be, you know. We'll, we're going to regret it anyway. So they carried. And then after a few days when they uh, were out of the dhulumat, they looked the people that carried these rocks and stones, they looked and they saw that it was Zabarjad. Uh, what, I don't know. Zabarjad is the green stone. It's a jewelry. It's a green stone. Jade, jade yes. So it was jade. And uh, those who didn't carry regretted that they didn't carry anything. And those that did regretted not carrying more. You know, so it was regret both ways. But the moral of the story is knowing 
is far better than not knowing. And the true knowledge, the true meaning of ilm, is that which will give you eternal benefit. See, some people read the biographies of those who became rich. You know, he was a nobody, but suddenly he became rich, and his autobiography became something special. I can guarantee he didn't know he was going to be rich, you know. The rich men of this world, no one guaranteed himself wealth. It's just that this is what God had written for them. And the proof is, all these autobiographies read, and all these life experiences that you gain from them, if you try to repeat it, you are, you are not guaranteed to become wealthy. Take every step, step they took. It's not a guarantee. It's just that the Aqdar, the fate, was written in a way that these steps this individual takes will lead him to wealth. A hundred or a million other individuals are taking the same steps around the world. And they are where they started from. The difference with this worldly knowledge and the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt is that if you walk in the steps of Ahlul Bayt if you take their lead and their example you are guaranteed you are guaranteed salvation you are guaranteed heaven it's not something that's not to be repeated. Every step they take, every word that they utter, if you utter it, if you say it, you get as much thawab to an extent that sometimes, although you don't say it sincerely, and you don't say it with as much faith as Ahlul Bayt have said, but because you tried to imitate Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you the reward. That's the beauty of the knowledge that Ahlul Bayt have. And that's why we are ordered to seek that knowledge. In the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal will ask the individual, why did you not do your duties. He would say that, Oh Allah, I did not know what my duties were. I was jahil. Allah then will reply, answer back. He would say, Why did you not learn? See, when it concerns our worldly needs, what we desire, what we want, we are ready to learn eagerly. We go for it. I mean, we start studying when we are six of age. That's compulsory. Some people drop out, some people continue on studying. But even those people that drop out, it's not that they don't go after and learn how to gain worldly benefits. They do. It's not that they don't go through it through academic means. So when it concerns this world, we try to get the best knowledge and to get the best ways to gain wealth and to gain the benefits of this world. But it, when it comes to the Akhara, suddenly we become cavemen. We don't know how. It's like I don't know how to get the means. I mean, in some countries, you know, it's illegal to download pirated movies, you know, and there's uh, different roadblocks so that you don't reach that. And people go and try to learn and make any detours so they can download a one hour movie that then they could watch and feel joy by watching. It's a movie. 
But they do, and they risk, for example, getting fined, the penalty, something, but who cares? I'll do it. For them, it's worth it. They circumvent all those roadblocks that have been placed to get what they want. They find a way around it. But when it comes to Allah, you see people asking masail that are readily available on the internet and you can find the answer for. But suddenly, he becomes a six-year-old. He doesn't know how to type on his keyboard. And then he goes and he performs the haram act. And then when you ask him why, he goes, I didn't know. You know, I'm not to blame. I'm a simple man. It's funny. But yet, it's also sorrowful. That this is how much concern and worth we give to our eternal life. You know, it's like it's in the back seat of our priorities. These majalis, the majalis of Imam Hussein, are a wake-up call for us. Imam Hussein was the biggest wake-up call. Karbala's Imam Hussein uprising was against this way of ignorance of people trying of people comfortable with having a khalifa, a king, a ruler like Yazid, because then they will have an excuse to be ignorant, because their leader is more ignorant than them. So, you know, they are in a much better position. They, we have an Arabic proverb that says, A'war al amyan basha. A one eyed man in a blind community is a master. So some people like to go, instead of trying to better themselves and go around people that they can learn from, they go around people that it's not that they are of a lower standard. They don't have standards. They're a lost cause to feel better. But I know you know, mom, what are you talking about? If you see my friends, they're much worse than me. I'm a good guy here, you know. I'm the better guy. You know, dad, what's this nonsense? Fulan and Fulan, you know, he takes drugs. Go pray, it's a lot to learn. Thank God that I'm not on drugs, you know. Fulan and Fulan does this. Come on, yeah, give me some, cut me some slack, mom. You know, dad, what are you talking about? This is our community. We give ourselves excuses. And we think that at the end, when my father uh, is quiet and my mother doesn't answer back, is that we won. You know? I got the best of him. Now he's quiet. He has nothing to say back. He has no comeback. You haven't won. There will be a day that comes that you will regret what you have said. Not only to your father, but to yourself. You will regret that you have uttered those words. That you didn't put in the time and effort to better yourself. To learn about Islam, about Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah Alayhim. If it's not today, if you don't reach that point in this world, you will reach it once Malak al Maut comes to you. Once Israel comes to you, then you will say, Rabbi Rujuni Laali Amal Salihan Fima Tara. Let me go back. Let me fix the mistakes I've done. But there's no going back. See, as long as we are alive, as long as we are alive, there is a bishara, a strong bishara, that if we decide to change, Allah is capable, not only, and is willing to yubaddilullah sayyatihim hasanat.
Allah will take your bad deeds, your bad choices. If you truly repent, if you truly decide to take the right path, He will take your bad deeds and change it into what? Into good deeds. God's capable. But you have to choose. You have to know where to go to gain this knowledge. And if you see a place or a way to go after that knowledge, then go. Don't, don't come and t to your friends, to your peers and say, you know, let's go to the mosque. It, it shouldn't be a team effort. It's good. But don't let that dissuade you if it's not a team effort. They are not going to save you at the day of judgment. If they didn't come with you, go at it alone. You will be sleeping in the grave alone. Your a'mal will be handed to you alone. You will be resurrected alone. You would answer to God alone. No one would come and back you up. People, fathers, mothers would disown their kids in the day of judgment. You would think your friends would come up to you. Iblis would disown his followers. See, Abu Dhar, salamullah alayhi, Imam Sadiq, عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام صلى الله عليه وسلم. has this beautiful hadith. He said, "Would you like me to tell you the story of the the way Salman and Abu Dhar became Muslims?" And uh, a man was sitting, and he was an unpolite fellow. He said, "Salman, I know. Tell us about Abu Dhar." You know, so the Imam said Abu Dhar was uh, he was a shepherd, and he was taking care of his herd, and then suddenly a wolf came to him. Between brackets, you know, uh, Abu Dhar salamullah alayh, became a muhid, and he started believing in in the oneness of God. Four years actually three years before the announcement of Islam. So at the same time the Prophet was, uh, uh, at the same time the Prophet had his revelation. Because the Prophet, when he had his revelation, he didn't go public with it till three years. He was a unifier. They told him, before Islam, you prayed to God? He said, yes, three years before Islam. They said, to whom did you pray? I mean, if it wasn't for Islam, we wouldn't know God. He said, I prayed for the God of the skies, you know, for the God that I know is above. Now, not physically, but he knew in the sense of his status. So he said, I prayed to this God, not to the idols we worship. So Abu Dhar, he was taking care of his herd. A wolf came from, from afar, from the right side of the herd. And if you've seen farms, you know, the herd sometimes spreads out. So he ran, he shooed it away. Again, he saw the same wolf after a few, maybe hours, minutes, come from the right, left side of his herd. So he came, he shooed it away. After a few moments passed, the wolf came from in front of his herd. He came and he said, what's got into you? I haven't seen a worse animal. I'm sure he would just go find another herd to, uh, to harass. And he said, if you hadn't, if you, and he said, I, the wolf spoke to me. He said, if you has, haven't seen worse than me, then how about the people of Mecca? Allah Azza wa Jal gave him his last, gave, the, gave them his last prophet, his last message. And they are still harassing and not believing the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So he thought, Abu, Dh Abu Dhar thought to himself, what prophet? And he went and he asked his sister. He said, you know, get me my food ready. I, I want to go on a journey. And he got, he prepared for the journey. And he went towards Mecca. He was living in Ghifar. So he went to Mecca. When he entered Mecca, see, this is a man that wants what? Knowledge. 
he seeks knowledge. If it was someone else, he would say, you know, to hell with, that, with whatever is happening in Mecca. I'm living my life. I have my heart. Who cares what's happening in Mecca? Let Mecca, let Mecca you know, s solve and take care of their own problems. So he went to Mecca. And when he entered Mecca, he entered the Masjid al-Haram. He went near the Kaaba. And the mushrikeen were there <coughs> speaking badly about the Prophet, insulting the Prophet, backbiting the Prophet. And he sat down. He was afraid to tell anyone what he came for. Because he, was, he knew it was like a, it's something that wasn't like good in the eyes of the Meccans. So then he suddenly saw these people that were talking and insulting the Prophet say, be quiet, his uncle came, you know, stop talking. And so they all became quiet and he said, I saw a man, a very honorable man, come inside Masjid al-Haram. And uh, they were all quiet and when he sat down with them, he was their official speaker. It's like they gave him the microphone, you know. Why? Because he was the knowledgeable one. You know, these were the guys that would sit and talk about, you know, every different subject that had no matter. But when Abu Talib came, he gave him true ilm, true knowledge. He gave him wisdom because Abu Talib had and was the inheritor of the wisdom of Abraham. So he said he spoke, they were all quiet. And then he came to leave when he went a bit far from these bunch of, let's say, miscreates. I ran to him and I said, uh, I came asking about the prophet that was sent. So Abu Talib said, for what reason? Why do you want to know where he is? And asked, what do you want to know about him? He said, I want to pay allegiance. I want to believe in him. I want to give him my uh, respect and tell him that whatever he says I will listen to him so Abu Talib said are you ready to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala Abu Dhar said Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah I'm ready I Allah say it Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah I don't mind so he repeated, Abu Talib said, okay, if, it's, if you are sure, come tomorrow, same time. Same place, same time. He went, and again, the next day, Abu Dhar came, and he saw the people. Again, they had nothing to talk about, you know. So they tried, it's like, you know, women's gossiping. They tried to find a subject to talk about. So they needed something to talk about. So they started again, you know, talking about the Prophet. What's this Muhammad? What's this? What's that? It's like, you know, we may, we may laugh, but we are the same. After a game is done, with that soccer, basketball, we sit for hours. Why did he drop the ball? Why did he uh, kick a bad corner? Why didn't the goalkeeper, you know, block it? And we start speaking hours about this. Laghwul hadith. A talk that won't gain us any worldly benefits and any benefits in the hereafter. A, ben a bunch of nobodies talking about a bunch of nobodies. You know? Instead of... And when it comes to salah, salah, after salah, speak to Allah. Allah, if you pray, Allah, whenever someone says, why do they call it takbiratul ihram? It's, it's, it has it, it's a sanctuary. You're entering the presence of Allah. You're saying Allahu Akbar, Allah will look at you. We have a hadith that says Allah will notice you, look at you. You are speaking to Allah. You have entered the sanctuary of the presence of Allah. You say Allahu Akbar, and then suddenly, where are you? Where are you? You're thinking about other things. You finish salah. You finish Salah instead of giving yourself a bit of time to speak to Allah. To say what you want. I mean, we complain to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Why don't we 
speak our hearts, take our hearts and tell Allah what we want. We have a hadith that when someone prays his obligatory salah, and then when he finishes, he goes out. You know, he, does, he doesn't sit down for tasbihat al-zahra, doesn't sit down for ayat al-kursi. Allah will look at his angels and say, notice my servant. He thinks that there is someone other than me that can answer his prayers. Where are you going? I'm here for you. We are not there for ourselves. So Abu Dhar enters the Masjid al-Haram. And these people are also talking about the Prophet. And he waits. Again, they say, be quiet. Abu Talib is coming. Abu Talib comes. Salamullah alayh. And uh, they sit down. Abu Talib becomes the official speaker again. And when he's going, he comes, he says, I, I would like to, uh, you know, meet the Prophet. He goes, Abu Talib asks, why? And he says, I, I said, I want to believe in him. I want to say, uh, I want to uh, be at his service. So Abu Talib says, uh, are you willing to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Just a quick note. Uh, the Prophet says, I'm not saying you, always, you should always recite the salawat in a loud voice, which is also very recommended. But mentioning the Prophet even without name. You know, we always have this, let's say, general, uh, general thought that if uh, we say salawat only when the holy name of Muhammad is mentioned. Salla Muhammad wa Muhammad. But in the hadith, there's no reference to that. The sole mention of the Prophet, whether by name or by reference, by name, or by reference, by any of his holy names, by any reference made to his Prophet, that requires a salawat. Any reference. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad wa The Prophet says, whoever I am mentioned in his presence, he didn't say by name, whoever I am mentioned in his presence and does not praise me, does not send salawat for me, he has swayed of the path and he's, he has swayed to the path of hell. So this is, this is something to take note. If you don't want to say salawat loudly, it doesn't matter. But if the Prophet is mentioned, even by reference, then praise his, his name. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Faraj. Going back. So Abu Talib said, okay, come with me. I, I see that you have the resolve that is uh, worthy of the Prophet. So he takes, you know, Abu Dhar was one of the first mu'mins, uh, the first Muslims. So he takes Abu Dhar to a house where there is Ja'far. Abu Talib had made like a security barrier around the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa 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 So he enters, he sees Ja'far ibn Abi Talib sitting there. So Ja'far says, what, uh, what business have you? And he says, I came to see the Prophet that has come. And he said, uh, why? And he said, I want to be at his service. I want to believe in him. I have faith in him. And so Ja'far Salamullah alayhi says, uh, okay, uh, come tomorrow. And he goes tomorrow and they, he takes him to a house where Hamza Salamullah alayhi, the uncle of the Prophet is in. And he enters the second, let's say, security line. And again, Hamza questions him, and again he answers, and then he takes him to another house. Where Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah alayhi, his present. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala And Amir al muminin also tells him, uh, asks him, questions him, then he takes him to the, pre- to the presence of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala. There, Abu Dhar pays his allegiance. Now, if you see this, this movement, this journey Abu Dhar had to take, and the struggles, and the fear that he had, until he reached Islam, and even after becoming Muslim, 
the pain and the struggles he went through. Was it worth it? Yes. For Abu Dhar, it was worth it. Because Abu Dhar became one of the people that when the Imam mentions as sabiqun Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran, when he says as sabiqun as sabiqun the Imam says Allah means in this ayah, you know, the first people, the forebearers of the people of heaven, he says Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning in this ayah, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Al Hassan wal Hussein Salamullah alayhim, Ja'far, Hamza, Abu Dhar, Salman, Muqdad. He became part of the elite groups of heaven, the first ones to be called into heaven, and the first one that will live an eternal life of blessing. This life is ending, we know, we see. Let's make the most out of it. Ilm. What's beautiful about ilm is it gives you the opportunity to gain more with the least amount of effort. It's not about multiple acts of worship. It's about genuine acts of worship. You don't need to struggle so much. You just have to have a sincere heart and know what you must do when you must do it. You know, the, the time and place to do, to, uh, the time of, and place for each obligation. It's like someone, you know, fasting for 30 days, but not in Shahar Ramadan. Would that do him any good? If he leaves out Shahar Ramadan, no, it won't do him any good. It's knowing these key moments. نوم العالم خير من سهر الجاهل. An alim sleeps. He's, he's, when he sleeps, his ibadah, his ibadah is more than that of a worshipper that's, uh, that's awake at night praying for Allah. Why? Because the alim when he sleeps, firstly, his faith in Allah, his praise to Allah, the faith he carries in his heart, is more than that worshipper that does not carry this faith. And the alim, and one, uh, uh, the one that knows, like Salman al-Muhammadi. Salman, the Prophet asks the Mormons and the people that, present, uh, that were present, he said, who of you stays up all night, every night, worshipping Allah? Salman said, me, I'm the one here. And then the Prophet asks, who of you, reads the whole Qur'an every day. Salman says, me, I do that. And then the Prophet asks, who of you fasts every single day? And Salman says, me, I do all that. So, <clears throat> the one and uh, only Umar comes and he looks at uh, the Prophet and he said, Salman is the biggest liar I have ever seen. I've seen him sleep at night Snoring also, and I've seen him eating food, chicken at that, and I've at, at the day, and I've seen him, Ya Rasulallah. You know, uh, was, there was three, let me, Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And I've seen him in a, a day not reading the Quran. So, what's he talking about? You know, he's just sucking up, Ya Rasulallah. Don't think he's better than me. I know I don't do that, but you know, we're at the same boat. So Rasulallah said, Salma, I know you know. Tell this guy. So Salman said, Oh Ya Rasulallah, I've heard you say, whoever reads, Qul huwa Allah ahad, three times, is as if he's read the whole Quran. I've made it a policy. Every day when I wake up, I read Qul Wallahu Ahad three times. Now, I want to ask you, how hard is reading Qul Wallahu Ahad three times every day? Ask yourself, how many days have you been doing that? When you, have, we don't, when you don't have the intention, even reading Qul Wallahu Ahad three times will become a burden. 
You won't even do it. It's easy. But you won't do it. Why? And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've heard also you've said that whoever performs wudu before he sleeps, it's as if he's stayed up all night in worship. How long does wudu take? Nothing. And then, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've heard from you that you say whoever fasts the first day of the month, the middle of the month, the, uh, the Arabic month, and the, the last day of the month is as if he fasts the whole month. And I've done that every month. Allahumma salli The shortcuts to heaven. When you have knowledge, you can understand and know where the shortcuts to heaven lie. And the biggest shortcut to heaven is Majalis al Hussein. Imam Sadiq says, Whoever remembers Hussein. And remembers what Imam Hussein faced, his tragedies. And he cried, and as much as a wing of a fly, how much is the span of a wing of a fly? Tears came out of his heart. Allah will let him live in heaven for centuries. Ahqaba. One single drop of tear on Imam Hussein. تُطْفِئُ بِحَارًا مِنَ النِّيرَانِ See, hell is like, the fire of hell is like molten lava. It's like a sea of lava. Imam says, one single tear on Imam Hussein will take, will take out seas of the fire of hell. The fire of hell is in such a way so burning that when hell, when hell's fumes go out in the mahshar, there's a hadith that says that hell will have its fumes spread out in mahshar, the fumes only. It would be so frightening that even Prophet Ibrahim Salamullah alayh will cry O oh Lord, I am your Khalil, your companion, do not forget me. That's the kind of fear the fumes of hell will instill in the people of Mahshar. One drop of tear on Imam Hussein Salamullah Ali will take all that down. Salamullah Ali Hussein. This is the day we remembered when Imam Hussein was forced out of Medina. He was threatened with death. He came to the Prophet's grave to bid his farewell to his dear grandfather. The hadith goes like this. Imam Hussein, when he put his eyes on the grave of the Prophet, he just kept weeping and crying. And then he threw himself on the grave. At that time, the grave wasn't built. There was no dariq. It was just a humble grave. So he threw himself on the grave of the Prophet. And then from the amount of tears and crying, he had a small nap. And in his sleep, he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Descending unto Hussein, he came to Imam Hussein, his uncle Ja'far, his father Amir al Mu'mineen, his brother Hassan, his uncle Hamza. They all came, and when the Prophet saw Imam Hussein, he ran to him and he hugged him. 
And he said, Habibi, ya Hussein, Noor Aini, ya Hussein. What have you come for, my dear grandson? What do you hold in your heart? Imam Hussein said, Ya Jaddah, La Hajat Ali fi Adi Dunya. Oh, grandfather, I don't want to stay in this world anymore. Take me with you. Let me be your companion. Awali, dhammani عندك يا جد داه في هذا الضريح. علني يا جد من بل وزماني أستريح يا رسول الله let me come with you I don't want to wake up from this from this dream let me be with you رسول الله زد حبيبي حسن Noor Aini Hussain, go to the land of Karbala. There awaits you your destiny. Habibi Hussain, let me tell you what will happen, Ya Hussain. Can you be Kalar Mal Karbala? I can see you on the burning sands of Karbala Asking for water Aywa Atshana Aywa Zayda Fala Tuska They won't provide you with water What will they do? Hussain, they will answer your call with the spears and swords and stones. Awali Abu Abdullah, he woke up from his nap. He hurried to his family. Oh, my family, get ready. We are all going to Karbala. To where our destiny lies, all the family started getting ready. The young girls were waiting, seeing the auntie Zainab, getting them ready to travel. There was a young daughter for Imam Hussein. His her name was Fatima Sugra, salamullahi alayha. She saw that everyone was getting ready. She was also anxious. It will be a family travel, a family. Family journey, but when Fajr striked, she saw that her sister Ruqayya is going. Everyone is being called by name, but Imam Hussein didn't call her. She came to him, Oh Father Hussein, you called my sister Sakina, you called my sister Ruqayya. Oh Father, why did you not call out my name? Imam Hussein said, Dear Fatima, this journey is long, this journey is harsh, and you are sick. I prefer you stay with Umm Salama. She said, Father, if you are leaving me, if I have no choice, I only have one wish. Imam Hussein said, And what is that, my beloved? She said, Leave Abdullah al Let him console me in your absence, O oh Father Hussein. So Imam Hussein said, I wouldn't mind, I'll give him to you. If he accepted you, if he wants to stay with you, then I wouldn't mind.
She took Abdullah her Ali in her arms and Abdullah started crying and pointing to his father. He says, if he sings, sister, take me back. I also have a destiny in Kirbala. I will be the last soldier of Imam Hussein. أوالي ورضيع بدم الوريد مخضب فطلق رضيع إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين إلهنا نسألك وندعوك بأحب الخلق إليك بالحسين الوجيه وجده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه والتسحة المعصومين من ذريته وبنيه عجل اللهم فرج وليك يا الله 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 اجعل فرجنا مع فرجه اجعلنا من انصاره واعوانه ومن المستشهدين بين يديه اللهم به تقبل اعمالنا اللهم به يسر امورنا اللهم به استجب دعواتنا اللهم به اقض حوائجنا اللهم به اشف مرضانا سيما المرضى المنظورين اللهم به زد في ارزاقنا ويريد زياره القدر السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى أخيه أبي الفضل العباس ورحمة الله وبركاته إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات وارواح موتاكم نهدي للجميع ثواب الفاتحة تسبقها الصلوات يا حسين يا حسين سلام نا نا کے روزے سلام ما کے مزا سلام نا نا کے روزے سلام ما کے مزا سلام نا نا کے روزے سلام चलामे आदानी भाने चलामे मादानी भाने सलाम माँ के मजार सलाम नान के रोजे सलाम के मजार सलाम नान के सलाम मैं तेरा दीन बचाऊंगा ए मेरे नाना मैं अपना खून बहा दूंगा 
اے میرے نانا حسین جاتا ہے مرنے حسین جاتا ہے مرنے سلام ماں کے مزار سلام نانا کے سلام مزار سلام نانا کے روز دعا کرو کوئی سر پہ ریدا نہ ہو اممہ نماز شوق شہادت قضا نہ ہو اممہ نہ آئے میرے چمن پہ ستم کی گئے دو گبار سلام نانا کے روز سلام ماں کے مزا سلام نان ماں کے دیئے جھلانے کو نانا تمہارے روزے پر ضرور آئے گی سگرہ ہر ایک شام و سہر خدا کرے رہ روشن خدا کرے رہ روشن صدا تمہارا مزا سلام نانا کے روزے سلام نانا کے تمہارے جیسا ہے نانا یہ میرا لالک بے دعا کرو نہ لگے اس کو آسمان کی نظر لوٹے نہ دور وطن سے لوٹے نہ دور وطن سے ہمارے دل کا قرار سلام نا کے روزے سلام نا کے مزا سلام نا سلام نا محمد وعالی محمد صلوات یا رب حق زہرا توفیق یہ عطا ہو مرنے سے پہلے یا رب دیدار کربلا ہو یا رب حق زہرا توفیق یہ عطا ہو مرنے سے پہلے یا رب دیدار جو عرض کربلا ہے ہر عرض سے جدا ہے اس خاک کربلا میں شہ کا لہو ملا ہے شہ کا لہو ملا ہے ہر لا دوا مرض کی یہ خاک ہی دوا ہے مرنے سے پہلے یا رب دیدار کربلا ہو یا رب حق زہرا توفیق یہ عطا ہو مرنے سے پہلے یا رب دیدار کر محمد وعال محمد صلوات اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم ان اللہ و ملائکته یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلموا تسلیما اللہم صل على محمد و علی محمد سبحان اللہ والحمد للہ ولا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر وللہ الحمد الحمد للہ رب العالمين اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اشہد ان 
أشهد أن عليا حجة الله عليه الصلاة والسلام حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وصل يا رب على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين